Good morning YouTube, Tula here. Today I'll be priming these papers with um, uh, Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. Mine is a clear transparent primer but they have also with the colors and they give um, a texture that's like the pastel mat. It is very grainy, almost like sa fine sandpaper and I'll show you what I've done. The first page I, I primed, this one was a test and I thought it would be cool to have the, the bits of uh, drawing in the background but then it turned to be... I find it too busy and too confusing and it wasn't as easy to cover with the, with the pastels so what I did next is I, well, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see in a minute. Uh, it's the first time I've been priming uh, papers. These I just used watercolors on, on top of the page. And the others you see below are with um, acrylic gesso on them. So this is the first time I'm doing it and there uh, was a lot of um, learning as I go in this process. For my first um, test, don't ask me why I thought it would be a good idea to um, mix all my colors, all my paints into one, one color and to create a background layer using that and I thought it would be a good opportunity to freshen up my palette so to use all the paint I had on it and clean the palette and start it over while mixing paint is uh, magical to see I'm not recommending this method, it was just a waste of a lot of paint. I poured it all into this little container where I had a lot of uh, purple shade. Now I'm taking it to the sink to pour some water so I can... Yeah, it's very transparent. I added some gouache, some magenta and cyan gouache paint to it and it's still very transparent. I didn't add a lot. So these are all the pages I'm using. I have tons of these kinds of pages with uh, testing um, brush strokes or colors or failed drawings or paintings. And I hate throwing away the paper, so I thought this is a good opportunity to reuse it and just paint over them and use them for the pastels. So I'm just covering it with paint, and as I said not going to do that I'm not going to do that again okay so I thought that my um, my background was still a bit transparent and re really dark and I thought I'll try another method I mixed some um, acrylic gesso which I had with this paint mixture and my gesso is really old, you can see that the mixture is very lumpy but uh, it's okay in this instance because I don't need the background to be a very um, smooth, consistent shade I'm okay with having bits of the white show I did get a few dry grains of the gesso which aren't as optimal but it's all right and for painting the gesso i used this uh, fan brush i had which is my <laughs> my largest brush and it turns out that um, 
it was easy to work with because the hairs are very, the bristles are very hard. But this also gave me brush marks that um, can still be felt through the gesso and through the, um, the primer that I'll be putting on later. So if you want a very smooth um, background, either use a softer brush or you can maybe um, sand it down a little bit with the sandpaper. When I um, made my first test with them, um, you will see later that I'm using a roller, a sponge roller for the for applying the primer. And in the first, um, in my first test, I noticed that a lot of the primer gets soaked into the sponge roller, and that it's very wasteful for the for the of the primer. I'm wasting a lot of material because it soaks into the sponge. So I decided to prime a lot of um, pages in one go, in one sitting, and so waste less of the material. So after I made my purplish gray mixture, I decided to do another one with a different tone. And now I'm using uh, the gesso again with uh, some ochre watercolor that I have that is a bit lumpy so I don't like using it so much and it was still too weak and I was wasting a lot of the watercolor so later on I add some um, gouache ochre into this mixture Here's the gouache. And this mixture was less watery, so it's much more lumpy. Still, it was a lot of fun. I felt like a little factory. I think I um, coated 24 papers, ranging in size from about A3 to the smallest one was about A5 maybe. So this is my mixture and you can see that I do have bits of white. Some areas are lighter and some are darker but I really like this look so I'm, I'm fine with that. And this one is um, very opaque so no problem covering the the watercolor although I still think the idea of having bits of the watercolor showing underneath are nice. Both the gesso mixture and the primer were really easy to clean off the table with um, a Windex window cleaner blue liquid and this is my crop from the day, my harvest, 24 pages, all slightly different. And for applying the primer, I have the little uh, sponge roller and the Art Spectrum Color Fix Clear Primer. And for this one, I did use a page underneath. I didn't want to cover my my desk with a lot of the um, of this substance. Although it does, it's quite easy. It uh, <laughs> you can remove it quite easily with the uh, um, window cleaner liquid. So you have to mix it very well. Because I'm supposing that um, the um, I think it it's got pumice powder in it, and that's probably heavier and sinks to the bottom. So they suggest mixing it, stirring it very well. And 
and this part was really quick it didn't take a lot of time and I did two, two quotes and both of them the first and the second dried really quickly so by the time I finished all my 24 pages I could go on to the second coat although uh, some of the papers I used um, are cotton papers and they well of course they absorb the water better so they took a little longer to dry from the watercolors and uh, from the gesso as well I have to thank Chainsaw Kitten for this tip about using the roller the sponge roller for the for applying the primer it's really easy to use it gives you a very even coat uh, and uh, her suggestion of doing two coats was very helpful as well one coat is just um, it didn't have enough tooth for me at least for the pastels I also want to mention that I used a lot of different papers so some of them are oh, nice shine nice even shine so a lot of them had different textured some were smoother some were more uh, textured and the texture is felt through both the gesso and the two coats of primer okay so this page is one that I covered with the watercolors and I didn't use the gesso on it and maybe you can guess what's going to happen yeah the color rubs off onto the onto the roller I still it's all right with me because the page was still dark enough and the roller got cleaned when I was doing the other gessoed papers so but take that into account if it matters to you that some of the color may lift if you use the primer straight on watercolors and gouache as well I suppose um, I should also mention that um, my brush strokes I think I said it <laughs> I like this shine it looks really nice oh well, now we have some sound I recorded um, some parts with the sounds so you can hear the um, the graininess of the primer I'm using more force initially and then a lighter touch I hope you can hear me over the sound um, let's talk about prices the paper I'm usually using is the pastel mat and I love it and I love its texture I love that I can uh, wash it in the sink and use it again but the paper I got cost me th almost $13 a page and the pages were 20 by 28 inches I think that's uh, 50 by 70 centimeters so about $13 a page and the primer cost me seven about $17 so it's well worth the money to prime your own pages but as you can see there's some work involved and for my 24 pages I used about two-thirds of the primer maybe up to three quarters so it's um it gives a nice texture very similar to the pastel mat and it's much less expensive much more foldable so this is the first coat and now i'll be putting the second coat on
I think I said all I have to say. There was uh, one page where I forgot to put the second coat on and the grain didn't feel dense enough for my liking. So I definitely go with the Chainsaw Kitten's recommendation of two coats. really easy to apply the primer with the roller. I used, I think I said, more pressure initially and then so I don't have uh, sponge marks on the page, I go more lightly and try to even it. Mm, cat hair, they get everywhere. So in the next video I'll show you how um, the papers perform with the pastel pencils and soft pastels. See you then I hope. Bye bye.